Walking in the heat. How do we cope with the heat whilst walking the Camino? I know some people are a little bit worried about this at the moment because Europe's going through a real heat wave. So this week, uh, I'm going to tell you how I cope with the heat. Coming right up. So I know some people watching this and, uh, and thank you for the feedback and the comments. You're a little bit worried about the heat walking the Camino and a couple of people have said, hey, have you got any tips about coping with the heat? So I'm going to cover that off in two ways for you. Uh, this week, I'm going to talk about how I cope with the heat. Um, and I've never really had any heat related issues. And then what we'll do next week is we'll follow that up with some expert medical opinion as well. And Dr. Terence Bergman is going to be joining us to give uh, you know, a, doctor, a physician's perspective on it. So uh, I'll give you the, um, you know, the personal perspective from someone who's walked a few Caminos and how I manage with equipment and things like that. And Terence next week will we'll delve into the sort of medical aspects and talk about treatments and things like that as well. Okay. So uh, I'm not going to get into you know, the differences between heat stroke and heat exhaustion and, and treating it. We'll leave that for next week with Terence. So let me talk about how I cope with the heat. And if you look at my complexion, um, Irish heritage, I don't cope very well with very high temperatures and lots of sun. So I probably are really on the side of safety. Um, so let me run through four different things that, that uh, I think are probably worthwhile, uh, and that is weather, clothing, hydration, uh, and kind of things to watch out for in the body. So let me step you through those, and I'll show you some bits of equipment that I use as well as we go through. Weather. Most important thing. So I'm planning my, my next Camino. Uh, it's going to be the VDLP starting in Sevilla. Down south in Spain, it gets really hot. You don't walk that one in summer. So I'm carefully planning the time of year that I'm going to walk. So think about what kind of weather you're going to be comfortable walking in and start to do some weather planning. And you're looking really, you know, you're not looking at weather forecasts. It's more climatic history. Um, so, for example, when I first started walking the Camino, I wanted to know, you know, what's, what's the weather generally like in April, May, um, around Saint-Jean, Roncesvalles, that sort of thing. And I looked at different points along the Camino Francis to get a sense of how hot or cold might it be? Is it going to be wet or dry? I mean, this is not a precise science, but it'll give you an idea of the sorts of temperature ranges that you're, you're going to expect. So um, in my times walking on the Camino Francis, um, I've always departed sort of the last couple of days of April out of Saint-Jean. Um, in 2015, for example, I think I only had two days of rain um, and mid Camino, it got pretty hot, well above 30 degrees centigrade. I think we hit the mid 30s at some point, so really quite hot um, for me anyway. Um, 2016, 2018, it wasn't as hot. It was very pleasant, actually. I, I kind of like early 20s centigrade, 20 degrees centigrade, even a bit cooler is really nice walking weather, I find. So think about the sort of weather that you're going to be comfortable walking in and start doing your research on what weather patterns are like various times of the year. The other aspect for, for weather is um, I, I'm checking the weather forecast every day. Um, I just think I'm going to sound like a, like a, like a real over planner um, and always looking for things that are going to go wrong. But it's common sense. It's very easy. There's some really good weather apps. Um, I've got a couple of videos on the channel here which show you the weather apps that I use. I want to know what the weather's going to be like next the next day. Am I going to be walking in the rain? It doesn't matter. I'm still going to be walking. Uh, is it going to be hot? Is it going to be cold? Is it going to be raining? Um, and so that also gives me a chance to see if there's any sort of heat waves coming up so I can prepare for that. So long-term planning and, and sort of daily planning do keep an eye on the weather. So that was the first one. Number two is clothing. Uh, this is a very personal thing, and I'll, we'll put up a couple of shots here of the sort of things that Pat and I wear while we're walking. Uh, very important if we go sort of head to toe, I wear a wide brimmed hat like this one. This is Pat's one uh, with the flaps that hang down the back. I'm wearing this practically all of the time that I'm wearing. So nice brim, 
uh, flaps down the back. On my first Camino, this wasn't enough. Um, and on the Camino Francis, you find you're, you've got the sun coming from your left side all the time. And I was getting a little bit of sunburn here on the side of my face. If I could have found a Shemag, you know, one of those <clears throat> sort of Arab uh, headdress things, I would have got one. I, I've really wanted to sort of almost cover my whole face, but, but this worked pretty well. Um, so a broad brimmed hat, very important. Um, clothing is a very personal thing. I, I don't wear shirts as thick as this one. This is a winter one. But I wear merino shirts, long sleeve shirts, and I wear long pants when I'm walking because I don't want to get sunburned. Um, and not only is sunburn painful, um, but it also impacts the ability of your body to evaporate sweat and thereby cool your body. So if you're prone to getting sunburn, uh, I'd suggest you might want to think about long sleeves, long pants. If you're one of those people that you know, it doesn't really get affected by it. You just go a lovely bronze color. You know, that's fine. You probably don't need to worry about it. But if you're sort of fair skinned and things like that, I always wear uh, long sleeves, long pants. Um, don't laugh. I generally wear very lightweight gloves because I'm using poles and I've had my hands sunburnt a few times. <laughs> First time out, so I wear gloves now. Um, and probably the best piece of equipment when you're walking on hot weather is the umbrella. And uh, Pat laughed at me last time we went and I said, look, we're both going to carry an umbrella. Um, <clears throat> you'll see some shots of them coming up now where, you know, they're reflective. Oh, best thing ever for hot weather. Absolutely. You're walking with your own shade. Um, so obviously I'm not wearing a hat when I've got the umbrella. Um, I'm getting the breeze through my hair. You know, that's helping evaporate, keep me cool. Um, I've never measured the temperature sort of under the umbrella versus not, but it's, you know, it's like standing under a tree all day. Um, and it, it uh, actually does reduce my water requirements as well. So if you're worried about walking in hot weather, I would definitely, definitely think about an umbrella. Um, also, um, you know, heat exhaustion and things like that comes through overexertion in the, in the heat. So it's another reason to keep your pack weight down. Uh, so I'm, I'm really trying to keep down to about six kilos plus water and food next time out. Um, but, you know, depending on your fitness, your strength, your age, all that sort of stuff, um, you, don't, you don't want to be overexerting in, in hot weather. So keeping your pack weight down a little bit is going to help as well. Number three, hydration. Very, very important. Um, one of the things about hydration is that when you start to feel thirsty, you're probably starting to dehydrate. Um, so as a rough rule of thumb, and we're all different, um, you know, you might be thinking, well, how much water do I need to carry? The rough rule of thumb that works for me is that I go through about a liter of water every 10 kilometers. So I, I work it over distance. Um, and that's fairly consistent. And Pat doesn't like to drink a lot of water because she doesn't want to have to pee a lot. You know, you've just got to get that out of your head. You've got to stay hydrated. And so I try to get her to drink a similar amount, although she's only about half my size. Uh, so she's popping behind the trees a lot as we're walking. But it's really important to keep that hydration up. Um, and, uh, you know, a good way to monitor that is obviously the color of your pee. So when you are hydrated, your pee is almost clear. Um, the darker it gets, the more dehydrated you're getting. So, you know, it'll sort of go yellow and then a very deep yellow. You know, you're, you're already dehydrating at that point. So um, <clears throat> what I would say is you're probably going to be better off drinking more water than you think you need. Um, and that's why water bladders or the, uh, the gear that Pat and I use where we have the water bottles on the front with... Uh, with drinking tubes. Those are great because you can just be constantly sipping and, and that's far better for you, I believe, than you know, having to stop, having a big glug out of a water bottle, putting the water bottle away. You know, I'm kind of just sipping on it all the time through the day. Um, and, and with having the water bottles on the front, we can see exactly how much we're drinking, uh, how much <clears throat> we've got left and so on. That's the only disadvantage with a water bladder uh, in your pack. You can't quite see how much you've got left. But hydration is really important. Check the colour of your urine when you're having a pee. You know, keep sipping water all, th all through the day. Um, in really hot weather, um, check out where the Pilgrim's Fountains are. So I know I keep talking about Mr. Brealey's 
guidebooks. I just happen to like them and the maps. Um, let me just show you what that looks like. All the guidebooks are, are similar. I've turned up a page without any fonts on it. <laughs> um, but anyway, let's, you know, if you're looking at a map in a guidebook, generally they'll show where there are water fonts, water fountains and things through the, through the day. So, you know, my general thinking about hydration is, let's say I'm, I'm walking 20 k's tomorrow. Okay, I'm going to need two liters of water. And then I'll, I'll probably, I have a, a 300 ml backup bottle as well, which I generally put electrolytes in. Because I have run out of water a couple of times on my very first one. Um, and it wasn't a very pleasant feeling at all. So I keep that 300 ml bottle kind of as a, as a reserve. So I might walk in 20 k's, I'm going to need two liters. Then I'll have a look at the guidebook and I'll say, okay, well, I'm going through a village. I'll stop for a coffee there. So, you know, that's within 10 k. So I don't really need to carry two liters. One liter will do. Um, and then I can sort of start to, to edge back how much I'm carrying because obviously every liter of water weighs a kilo. Um, but one word of caution, as you're looking at the guidebook and you're seeing where the water fountains are and the cafes and so on, doesn't mean to say they are open. <laughs> you might come through a little village and think, oh, that's great, there's a cafe, we're, we're going to stop there, and then you find it's a Sunday and it's closed, or they're closed for siesta. Uh, a couple of times I've you know, been banking on a, a water fountain, and I've got there and found that it's dry, not, not operational. Yeah, so hydration, um, make sure that you're, you're carrying enough that you know what your sort of comfortable consumption of water is like. Check what the weather's going to be like. Check the villages you're going to go through, where you're going to be topping up water and so on. Number four, um, and this is really important, listen to your body. You'll hear this a lot when people talk about the Camino. Um, and generally, you know, from a physical well-being point of view, um, you know, I've mentioned this on a few videos when I'm starting out in the morning, I'm warming up and then I'm first couple of kilometers, I'm kind of checking myself head to toe, you know, am I feeling okay, muscles warmed up and everything okay. It's really important regarding your overall health through the day as well. Um, so, you know, if you are feeling particularly tired uh, that day, if you're a little bit off color that day, uh, you know, don't push yourself because all, all of these things are, could potentially lead to, um, you know, dehydration issues and overheating issues and things like that. So always, you know, walk within your capabilities and how you're feeling that day. If you're not really feeling up to it, maybe don't push that 30 Ks today, do 20, that kind of thing. Make sure you're having plenty of rest through the day. You know, the Camino is not a race. Um, rest under a tree in the shade you know, get under the umbrella in the cafe, whatever, lots of cold drinks. Um, you know, it's lovely if you come across streams and rivers and things, um, <laughs> taking the obvious precautions. Uh, it's lovely, you know, to dip your feet into the stream and, and things like that. That's great, you know, for 10 minutes, that sort of stuff. It all helps, um, you know, relax you and, and um, it all helps with the dehydration and so on and keeping cool and so on, very important. Um, and if you're, if you're not feeling that great, think about walking a short day. Um, I, I think a lot of injuries, not just heat related injuries, but you know, stress injuries and things like that happen because people feel for some reason they've got to walk you know, the distance that they plan to walk that day. Uh, and that's of course one of the disadvantages with having accommodation pre-booked all the time. Uh, it can limit your flexibility. So, you know, if you've got a 30k day, I don't walk that far, but and you're 20k's into it and you're thinking, wow, you know, I really don't feel like this last 10 and you're generally not feeling that great. Um, maybe stop earlier that day or if you have to, you're going to jump ahead to, to your pre-booked accommodation or something. Um, yeah, so, you know, really don't rush and, and get a, you, you will absolutely get a sense of how your body's operating. Uh, it's, a, it's an uncanny thing on the Camino, you know, you become much more aware of how everything's functioning. You know, <laughs> it's quite, quite amusing in a way. I, I find that first sort of kilometre as I'm setting off in the morning, you know, and I'm kind of going through this mental checklist and, you know, you can almost feel individual little muscles, you know, like, oh, there's a bit of tension there in the right Achilles, you know. I, I better stop and stretch that a bit, you know. So um, do take care of your body and particularly... Um, you know, make sure you're not overheating and keep hydrated. So there we go. I did ramble on a bit. 
Um, so the four things, what were they? You know, check out the weather before you go. Make sure you're not going to be launching yourself into, uh, you know, walking in, in a climate or temperature at the time of year that is just going to be way too much for you. Um, do check sort of daily weather forecasts and things like that, particularly if it's warm to see if there's a bit of a heat wave coming. I, I had that once. My brother was even sending me messages from the UK saying, there's a big heat wave building up in the south of Spain. It's going to hit you in a couple of days. Yeah, and it did. Um, you know, clothing, <clears throat> make sure that, you know, if, if you look at um, the Bedouin, you know, they have long flowing robes and things like this. They're covering their skin. They're letting lots of air circulation. You know, that's kind of the right stuff to wear, isn't it, in the heat? Uh, so the right clothing to keep the sun off you, particularly if you're fair skinned. Umbrella! Do get an umbrella if you're worried about the heat. Hydration, very important. And listen to your body all the while that you're walking. Do listen to it. Very important. Okay, there we go. I've rambled enough for this week. Um, if you've got any tips uh, on coping with the heat, do comment down below. If, if, if you or someone with you had sort of heat related issues, you know, maybe you can share those stories and we can learn from those as well. And don't forget to check in next week. Um, Terence Bergman, who's a, um, a, he's a physician at the ER department uh, at, a, at a hospital in Canada. Uh, I've asked him to come on and sort of give us the medical viewpoint on heat injuries and coping with them and so on. And that's going to be fascinating. So tune in next week as well. See you then. Bye for now.